Hi, I'm Sandy McVeigh, and this is Microsoft Word 2010 Mail Merge Letters. This video and all of my sample files that I'll be showing you are available at my website, www.tinyurl.com slash smcveigh. So first of all, here is the folder of all the files that I have put together for this session, but we're only going to use a few of them. Here's the first one, it's the sample basic letter. So for people that are brand new to mail merge, this is how it works. You take a sample letter, a standard letter, and you hook it to a database. So we start the mail merge from the mailings tab, choose letter, select our recipients, and this time I'll use an existing list because I have an Excel file that'll act as my database, and it's here on my desktop. You don't have to just have it on the first sheet of an Excel database. This example will has the name for all the tabs, and all of our information is on the people sheet. There's also a checkbox if um, the first row contains your column headers, which is what I would suggest for your merge fields. If you start the first row with your actual merge data, you want to uncheck that, or that first record will never be picked up in the merge. At this point, if you want it, you could edit this recipient list and filter people out or sort them alphabetically or by state, but it's not required. We're going to use an address block because that's a nice way that lays out the fields. Our mailing isn't going to everyone in the United States, so this is very helpful. It formats it based on the way certain country codes would lay out their addresses. There's a preview window over here, and as we can see, the street address is missing. So how do we fix that? We need to tell Microsoft that we um, have a different naming convention than they're expecting. Microsoft looks for address 1 and address 2. So since my address 1 was not in there, I'm going to match it with street. And that was in my data, it's the column header for row 1. I'm going to click remember this matching data so I don't have to do this again. And now you'll see my preview looks pretty good. If I use the little arrows up here, I can look through and see this is how it would be formatted for England. And for France. And for Spain. So something that's interesting about the countries in Europe is that what we consider the zip actually comes before the city. So we'll click OK. And you'll see an address block. So I could just put the first name here, but I'm going to use something called a greeting line. And I'm going to choose dear, and I'm going to make this informal. So I'm just going to find what would pass as a first name. Uh, Joshua Randall is not in our database. This is just uh, a placeholder to give you an idea of the name. So if I see this is what my preview would look like, I can scroll through and that looks okay. So I'll click OK. I'll get rid of this. Dear, that was there holding my place. And now I can preview the results to take a look at what it would look like. I can scroll through the records to take a look at how each one would look. But it's not actually merged down here at the very bottom, which is slightly off our screen. You can see that we still have page one of one. So I would encourage you to take the preview off and get used to looking at those merge fields. And when you're done, you'll click Finish and Merge and Edit to Individual Documents. We'll say All. And so it made a new document called Letters 1. And as it populates, it has 16 different letters in it, one for each row of my data. So I only had 16 entries in my data. And I'm just using the Zoom tool to scroll out. See, we have multiple pages. So this is what you would send to your printer. And that's the basics of mail merge.